happy birthday venture into the cosmos. Woo! -hoo! Yes! Celebration! Ah, oh, it's been one year since the debut of Venture into the Cosmos. Well, wow. Wow, we. I feel older, I think. Um, so, yes, today, April 6th, 2020, marks the one year anniversary of Venture into the Cosmos. And man, what a. What a film. <laughs> I figured I would celebrate the one year anniversary of Venture Into the Cosmos, my first short film, by just simply reflecting back on the whole filmmaking process and the journey and hardships and struggle of it all. But first, I would just like to say I am back in my old house. I moved out of my dorm pretty early. I'm sure you can guess why. And videos should be coming out a, a lot more now than they were when I was in college. I think I made like two videos during college. So yeah. All right, I'm going to take off these shades. I don't, I don't know why I wore these. Uh, oh, that's great. So let's kick things off. I have a little notepad of things so I don't uh, drift off and talk about other things and get distracted. So, let's start with the origin of Venture Into the Cosmos. It all started with, actually for a while, I've always had a concept of a Star-Lord Han Solo-esque cocky, kind of, I don't want to say dorky, but like tries to be cool but isn't bounty hunter, crash landing on a planet and running into an alien. And the alien was supposed to be really weird and kooky, but like ultimately the villain, and it was the bounty hunter's job to escape said planet. It was an idea, it was an idea, mm. it was an idea I had for a while, and I almost filmed it a couple of times, but I just never got around to it, and I thought it was a little too ambitious for what I can currently do right now. But I kind of just put it on the back burner and didn't really think about it much until senior projects came around. And with a senior project, my school, usually schools, high schools, they have some sort of theme or you have to have follow something. But my high school was cool for once and actually said, just do what you want as long as it has something to do with your career. And that's what I did. So I took that concept I had in the back burner for a while. And then I started to craft it into its own thing. I think it took about two to three months to write, but eventually I started just writing out the whole concept. First, I made the character Jackson Warwick. You know, hey, hot shot, how you doing? Played by yours truly. But yes, I created the character Jackson Warwick. It's actually funny how I came up with his name. A friend of mine and I, we just, we were sitting in class and I was like, trying to write my script because it was a prep hour. Ah oh, man, I really, uh, I need to think of a name, but I can't think of anything really that good. And all we did was went on a name generator and then just generated some names <laughs> until eventually we landed on Jackson Warwick, which I thought was a fitting name for the character. So that is the grand reveal of how I came up with the name Jackson Morlick. Funny enough, when it came to making Sleazegon, same thing happened. I looked up alien name generator and did the same thing. I'll actually get to Sleazegon's name in a bit, but first, Jackson Morlick, on the surface level, he's more of just like the everyman. He just, he's kind of cocky, but also kind of, uh, he brushes into things, he's impatient, he, tries to act smooth but he really isn't he's kind of just again something similar to like a Han Solo Star Lord esque but just he's kind of like someone who would try to act like Han Solo or Star Lord but he ultimately uh, doesn't come off that way <laughs> but part of his arc was figuring out his place in the cosmos figuring out who he is and just essentially making a name out of himself. It's why he joined the Galactic Academy that was mentioned in the first film, and why he became an Academy soldier, but then eventually left, fled, crash-landed on the planet Garthantua, ran into Sleazegon, Stellar, 
and the rest is history. But yes, he had a very, I don't know if simple's the word, but just kind of like, he just wants to do something. He just wants to be somebody that makes an impact in people's lives in this galaxy. And that was essentially his whole character. Now, with Sleaze Gone, there was a bit of an interesting thing here. I knew I wanted someone to play this quirky, kooky alien. At first, I considered myself to play him as well as playing Jackson because I was so used to making PALS videos that that was originally my idea. But then I thought, well, that ah, I kind of want to get more actors involved and I'm tired of playing every character. So... Yeah. <laughs> so, I was thinking, and almost immediately it came to my friend Aaron Birch, who plays Sleaze God, and I talked to him about it, about the project, and he almost immediately said yes. He was like so excited, he was ready to go, and I think he did a fantastic job, and I can't thank him enough for playing the role of Sleaze God, Quaxon, Kippins, whatever, I forgot his last name. <laughs> Funny enough, actually, the reason why in the film Sleaze Gun had so many last names and whatnot, one, it's just to be funny, but also because we couldn't think of a specific name. That alien name generator, I settled on Sleaze Gun because I thought that was a fitting name, but I also wanted to give him a last name, and I had this whole list of <laughs> names, alien names, and I couldn't think of one or I couldn't pick one and it was my girlfriend actually who I talked to and I was like hey uh I don't know like do you think any of these look good and she's like just use all of them <laughs> and that's what inspired Sleaze Gun Quacks on Kippins, Groofnock, Quarksack, Kippins, Gobblenocker the third I think something like that <laughs> anyways Sleaze Gun's character I knew, uh, because this alien is the only inhabitant on his planet, I knew I wanted to make him a little crazy, because he hasn't been in any sort of society for like a long time, eons I think he said in the film, and he just, he was losing it, he was a crazy kooky alien, but I also knew at the first sight of someone new, he would probably want to make them his friend. And when that ultimately backfires in the film, he goes a little crazy and he becomes the antagonist of the film. Wow, I'm really sounding like a film major now. I need water, one second. Anyways, another uh, little tidbit about Sleaze Gun. He's actually my favorite character, partially because my friend Aaron portrayed him and again, I think he did a fantastic job. But also, there's just something likable to his, about his character. It's, he's very sympathetic. Like, you watch him and I'm so proud that like people have told me about like, wow, man, I really feel for Sleaze Gone or how dare Jackson and Stella leave Sleaze Gone behind. And I'm like, I tried to murder them. I, what do you think? Like, yeah, I get it, but still, man, Sleaze Gone deserves better. And it's just, it's just so fun to like discuss it. And, I just feel like a lot of people can even relate to Sleaze Gone, and I myself can relate to him, and I just think it's ultimately, I don't know, it's something very appealing about his character overall. Now the original idea or concept was just Jackson and Sleaze Gone, but I felt to really flesh out the story, the character Jackson, while Sleaze Gun's already a foil to his character pretty much. I felt like he needs, uh, he needed someone else to serve as a, I don't know if foils the word, but someone to like play off of him, compliment him in a way. And then I started brainstorming and then I thought of the character Stellar, this bad butt bounty hunter who had it bad for Jackson just so she can get money off of him for his bounty. And when it came to Stellar, I knew I just wanted someone who could like play this character that's like, yeah, she's bad, but but she's also like, oh, how do I put it? Stellar, wowzers. <laughs> Stellar is a character that, as you know, she's a bounty hunter and she's done a lot of killing, but she's done it so much that it's just like every other Wednesday to her. So it's just someone to play this bad butt character, but also showing some sort of level of almost guilt, but like 
subconsciously. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but I am doing this on the spot here. So when it came to finding an actress to play Stellar, one of my best friends, Leandra Marlowe, I asked her about the character, and she was, again, kind of like Aaron, agreed almost immediately, and the rest is history. And I'm so thankful, I think she did a really solid job as well playing Stellar, and I've even had people say that Stellar is their favorite character because she's like this cool bounty hunter and, you know, she's always so focused on the goal. She like, she never gets distracted or hardly gets distracted. She's always like 100% determined what she needs to do, she gets it done. She's blunt, she's in your face and she, you get out of her way, pretty much. Oh, I cracked my elbows. And so when it came to writing her character, that's basically that. That's basically what I focused on was this character who was just so logically thinking, focused on the mission at hand, and nothing else. She played no games. She was honest. She was blunt. She was straight to the point. And so after I had written the script, which I actually have the original script with me, this is what we used. We had a binder and we would rip out each page as we finished along and here it is oh my wow this takes me back oh my goodness huh starting to think the little creep was right there is absolutely nothing here no people no buildings no nothing and with my ship gone i'm all out of food i gotta get out of here before things get worse huge flash appears in front of Jackson. Jackson freaked out. <laughs> oh man, this was probably not a professional way to go about things, but hey, we got it done. Nice little segue into bringing physical things into this. I have this little shoebox full of old Venture into the Cosmos props. First thing, this isn't anything special. This was Sleazecon's gloves. Mm, that's it, the gloves. Next was uh, Stellar's grenade used for that like one scene. Funny thing, I think this belonged to like a garden light and it like, you can see the solar panel because it's something my dad suggested. He's like, hey, you could use this as a grenade, like twist it, throw it, boom, explosion. And I was like, all right, I guess that works. <laughs> the next thing was Jackson's gun, which I found out recently. I think this is a Star Trek gun, which I didn't know. This is just something my brother gave to me a while ago. But yeah, I this might be a Star Trek gun, so if um, the CEO of Star Trek comes after me, uh, uh, sorry. Next was the teleporter. I don't know where I got this from. It's some weird, like, old 2000s kid spy gadget thing. I don't remember how it opens. Only Leandra um, Stellar knew the combination. She actually, she just listened closely for the clicks, which I couldn't do. I always used a toothpick or a flosser just to open it, and man, I don't know how she did it, but like she did it, so. And finally, the best thing to come from Venture the Cosmos is Sleaze Gun's blue ears. Oh my gosh, it took so long to get these on him, and even still, they would slip off sometimes, and oh my gosh, props out of the way. Let's continue. Reflect. Thanks, Past Will. I mean, there's nothing much more I could say. Just to reflect on the film itself, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I won't lie, I, it's not the greatest film in the world. It has plenty of flaws, and it, there, it was a little rushed, I won't lie. I know, because we filmed this in Michigan, there was uh, Polar Vortex, if any of you recall, took place. Was it Polar? Yeah, it was Polar Vortex that took place, and it messed scheduling up a lot. What should have taken no more than a month, maybe two, turned into like three or four months of filming, because we started in, in December, and then we ended in like February, March. It should have it just went from December to January at the very most, but because it was really hard for people to get rides, and I mean, polar vortex, everything was all, the roads were terrible, and <laughs> thanks Michigan. But like I said, I won't lie, it's not the greatest film out there, and I know some of the effects that I had to use are not exactly uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe-esque effects. 
Uh, there's a few effects that I think did a solid enough job and they worked, like they did the job they were supposed to do. But there's a few that they're, it's bad, I won't lie, it's bad. But at the same time, what do you expect from a senior project uh, from a couple of high schoolers? So it ultimately, I think it works out. <laughs> oh, also, venture into the cosmos. <laughs> okay. So, for the senior projects, there was rewards given out, specifically for best senior project. But basically, if you were nominated for a reward, you were given a slip, and that's basically your ticket, I think it was. That was your go-to and getting into the show that, hey, you've been nominated. I never got a slip. And I just assumed, alright, I guess Venture in the Cosmos wasn't that good enough. But then, the night of the award show ceremony thing, I get a call from Leandra, funny enough, because she was nominated for something as well. And she says, hey Will, um, guess what? I was like, what? Wait, aren't you at the award ceremony? And then she's like, yeah, um, you won. And I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, yeah. You won Best Senior Project! I was like, wait, I did? And like, at first, I was super excited, I was so stoked, but then I'm like, WHERE THE HECK WAS MY INVITE?! Apparently, I think they made a mistake and just forgot, because my school was just so amazing at their job, so... Thanks, school. I actually think I still have the award itself. I'll be right back. Funny enough, I actually had to buy a plastic frame for it because they broke the frame <laughs> for my reward and didn't replace it. So I had to buy this old plastic frame. But basically, oh, I don't know if you can see that. But as you can see, the Senior Project Award presented to William Clapp for outstanding effort and remarkable execution of his senior project at high school during this 2018 to 19 school year. And I'll be honest, I was so happy to receive that despite not being invited. It was just such an honor to know that my silly little Guardians of the Galaxy fanfic of a short film did so well like I I was just it was I was so happy like and I'm st I still am I think Despite the film's flaws, which there's plenty. I <sighs> It's just it meant a lot to me, you know, what else is on here? Um, fun facts I only wrote one fun fact on here, but um, I'm sure I can think of more on the spot. Well, first fun fact, Sleaze Gun was originally going to be green. I don't know, I, I think, I can't imagine him as green anymore, because we didn't have green face paint, which is why we didn't go with green, but like looking back, going with blue, it's so much better, because I don't think the green would have worked well or nearly have been as, like, I guess iconic because I, oh man, I, cool, oh wow. Well, I think this whole video is full of fun facts, so I'm just going to go on my last little thing here. Co-stars. Originally, we were going to get together and just sort of talk this out like as like a fun little podcast-esque discussion and just reflect on the film. But I'm sure you can guess why we can't do that! So instead, I asked Aaron if he had anything to say, and he wrote a little message which I will read to you now. Venture into the Cosmos has been an ambitious project for everyone and had pulled it off successfully. When I had played the character Sleaze Gone, I was really honored to play as a villain in the short film. While it did take a while to memorize all the lines, names, and just simple pronunciation, much like Sleaze Gone in real life, I had every bit of enjoyment on the set. While playing as the character, I wanted to give off the impression that he sounded smart but was a complete dummy, while also displaying exaggerated Super Sentai Power Rangers poses. What I was surprised the most once after the film was done was that the character was a fan favorite. While I thought I wasn't the greatest at acting, I still appreciated all the remarks I was given. I could go into more detail of the whole production of the film, but Iron Will, that's me, can summarize it for you if he could. 
But hey, who knows? Sleazegon might show up again someday. Wonk. So that's what Aaron had to say, and thank you, Aaron, for playing Sleazegon again, and all of your help with the filming process. It's... I couldn't have done it without you. Now, originally I asked Leandra if she wanted to send a video or something, but uh, she said it was last minute, so she couldn't. But I'm going to call her a total surprise, and hopefully she answers. Let's see. Hey guys, Future Will here. So like a big idiot, I realized that Leandro was working at this time and so that I couldn't actually contact her, which was unfortunate and I was a big dummy idiot for that. Luckily, I talked to her afterwards during her lunch break and she had this to say about reflecting on the film. I'm proud of what we did, but I know we are going to do better in the sequel. There's always room for improvement. And there you have it, folks. Alright, um... I think that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, thank you all so much for enjoying Venture into Cosmos one year ago, and if you're still watching it today, then thanks for that too. I don't know why you would be, but thank you. <laughs> one last thing before I go, just a quick update. I am going to be making videos a lot more now because, as I'm sure you know, I'm in quarantine right now, along with many other people, so I have nothing much to do but make videos. Alright, well that being said, thank you all for watching, and I will venture into the cosmos! <laughs> Alright, I'm done. <laughs>